Peace and blessings. I'm Sister Colette. I'm your sister by nature. And today I'm going to be canning some carrots using the pressure canning method. All right. And I'm going to be using a recipe with some rosemary, thyme, a little bit of salt and some vegetable broth. OK. And so this is the first time I've actually used this recipe. So I'm hoping that it comes out pretty delicious. I think that it will. All right. And so hang in there with me. OK, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is washing my jars and getting them into the canner for sterilization, all right? So I've got some warm, hot soapy, hot soapy water here in my sink. My jars are here, and this canner is already filled with hot water. Um, it's been kind of simmering, so it will be ready um, to start boiling once I get these jars transferred into the canner. All right, and so we're gonna go ahead and get that process going. Very simple process. All we're gonna be doing is washing our jars thoroughly on the inside um, and the outside. We're going to be definitely checking for any type of nicks or cracks in the mouth of the jar. Okay, we don't want that. If you come across any type of crack, you're gonna go ahead and put that jar aside because we cannot use any type of crack, no matter how small it is, because it will prevent our jars from sealing. Okay, so definitely going to be washing and inspecting as we go. All right, so here we are. I've got um, some jars here, some brand new jars here. Um, I'm using pint-sized jars, wide mouth. Um, I prefer wide mouth when I'm using, uh, when I'm gonna be canning like um, carrots and potatoes and things like that. I'm gonna actually put my lids and my bands to the side and I'll wash those a little later. Um, Cause they just kind of get in the way sometimes. So I'm just gonna um, start, let's get my jars in here. And I think I'm gonna just probably wash about maybe nine, eight to nine pint jars. I don't have a lot of carrots. I've got six pounds of um, carrots already um, cut. All right, so it's not gonna be a lot of jars for this batch. Let me put this to the side. And so this is a very, um, it's not rocket science, not a big deal. I'm just going to be, and I like, one thing I like about the wide mouth jars is that you can really get your hand all the way in there to wash. Whereas the regular size, um, jar, regular mouth size jars are a little bit more difficult to maneuver. And so you really have to have a scrub for that. But I use the scrub anyway, even for the, wide mouth even though I can really get in there with my whole hand. All right, so I'm just gonna go through this, get them all washed and set to the side, and then after that's done, then I'll get them transferred into the canner. All right, so I'm finishing up my last jar. I've inspected and washed it, washed it and inspected. So I've got nine jars over here. One, two, three, yeah, nine um, pipe size jars. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump these lids and bands into the soapy water. I like to wash them separately. All right, so I'm gonna wash these all separately and then I'll place them back into this white bowl here. Okay, so the jars are all washed and I've inspected them all for nicks to make sure that there are no cracks in the mouths of the jars. So right now I'm just gonna be transporting them over into the canner for the sterilization process. Um, and so that's pretty simple. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab them and start placing them down into the canner. Now they may float a little bit, so you just wanna be a little careful. It's no big deal if they tip a little bit. We'll just adjust them as we go along. Um, sometimes what I like to do is scoop a little bit of water in the jars, and that kind of prevents them from falling over as much as well. The water is not really hot, so I'm not in danger of burning myself, so I'm not really concerned too much about using um, a jar lifter. <clears throat> and yes, I'm using my hands, but they're going to be boiling and sterilizing. So any bacteria on my hands, trust me, is gonna get burned away. 
All right, so I don't know how many more I can fit in here. I can fit one more, it looks like. When I use the regular mouth jars, I can usually get nine in here, but the wide mouth, I can only get eight. So we're gonna get eight. So basically what I'm gonna be doing now is lowering this down into the can. And this usually always ha happens, which is what I usually use the tongs for to help uh, pick up any jars that have fallen over. But at this point, I don't wanna actually put my hands in the water. It is a bit warm because it was over here simmering. Okay. So I'm just gonna like maneuver a little bit here. There we go. And I'm just gonna double check to make sure I have at least about an inch, inch and a half of water over the mouth of the jar. So I've got over an inch above the mouth of the jar. So that's good. Because it's gonna be boiling and evaporating. And we don't we want to make sure that we maintain water over the jar while it's boiling all right so i'm going to bring this back up to a high boil i got my flame on high and once this gets to a rapid rolling boil i'll set a timer for 10 minutes and that is the um time that is needed to properly sterilize the jars okay and so in the meantime i'm going to start getting prepped getting my carrots prepped all right, so my jars are over here, um, heating up, getting ready to be sterilized. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing the broth for my carrots, okay? And I'm just gonna cook them down just a little bit. So I've got some, I did not do fresh carrots this time. Usually I have fresh carrots and I peel them and cut them up, um, but I didn't have time for that today. So I went out and bought some pre-cut organic carrots this time, all right? So that's what we're gonna be using this time. So I'm gonna put these to the side. I'm gonna wash them still. They say pre-wash, but I'm going to give them a nice rinse um, myself. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get my broth started. So I have some organic vegetable broth that I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna use two quarts to get started. So I'm gonna pour in two quarts of the vegetable broth and then I will add in my um, rosemary and my thyme seasoning that I have sitting over here so I just used I'm going to be just adding a tablespoon of the rosemary and a tablespoon of the thyme and then I'll add a little bit of salt after I'll just kind of taste it as I go um, but that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and get this a little warmed up. Just a little warmed up. And I've got my rosemary and thyme already mixed up here. I just did a tablespoon of each. So I don't think it calls for much. And we've already got a broth here. So um, it's just kind of a light um, herb um, seasoning. So I'm actually going to go ahead and sprinkle that on in. All right. And I'll just give it a little stir with my ladle stir it around just a little and i'm just going to put this to the side and i love this ladle it has a little hook here so that you can just kind of put it on the side of your pan right so you don't have to keep misplacing your spoon and i do sell these on my website at canningwithcolette.com if you're interested um but all right so in the meantime while this is heating up i'm going to go ahead and wash these and then i'll be placing them into the broth. I may need, I'm not sure, I may need a little bit more broth. Um, I may add one more quart, but we'll see how it looks once I add the carrots. All right, so I have already added four pounds of the uh, cut carrots in here. I'm going to add one more pound because I'd rather have more than enough, and I probably will have more than enough because um, I'm only doing eight pints right now, but I can always jar another batch at another time. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to add a little bit more broth. So about half of this. This is um, one quart. I'm going to do about half of this. So I'd rather have more than enough. All right. And I'm not going to add any more um, rosemary or thyme because 
I think there's plenty in here. I can see a lot of herbs in here. It's very well uh, seasoned up, I can see. Um, so all I'm doing now is waiting for this to actually start to um, heat up. And I'm only gonna let it, once I see like a small boil, I'll just let it boil for maybe two minutes um, and kind of almost give it a blanch. And then we'll go ahead, these jars will probably be ready by then. And then we'll be able to go ahead and jar them up and get them ready for the pressure canner. Okay, so I can actually hear what sounds like boiling inside of this canner. So I'm gonna take a peek inside to see if it is rapidly boiling. Okay, yes. Not sure how well you can see that, all that steam, but do you see there? It's a rapid rolling boil. And that's what we're talking about. Um, we're waiting for it to get there. And so now we're at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and set this timer for 10 minutes. Okay, and so this has not quite heat, these carrots have not quite heated up where I want them to be yet, but they're almost there. I'm actually gonna go ahead and add my salt now. I'm adding just about a tablespoon of salt because it was like five uh, quarts, five pounds, excuse me, of carrots. So one tablespoon, I think will be enough. I'll taste it, taste the juice later, and then we'll go from there. And then I'm just gonna put the top on and let that start to warm up. Ah, there we go. So it's been 10 minutes. All right, so I'm going to come on over here and turn off the heat on this canner, all right? The heat is off. I went ahead and had let that, you know, blow rapidly. I did not adjust the heat at all. I'll go ahead and turn this off now. It's been 10 minutes. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing now is removing the jars from this canner placing them over here on the countertop, I'm gonna go ahead and start filling um, those jars up with the carrots. The carrots are ready. They've been over here just kind of simmering a bit. So they are ready to go. Ooh, it actually smells really good. All right, so I'm gonna take the lid off of here. Be careful, open it up away from me because there's a lot of steam coming out of there. And so I'm going to be very careful lifting um, these up out, these the rack up out of the canner because it's really hot. So I'm going to just grab an extra pot holder and um, go ahead and maneuver that way. Now you don't have to do this right away. If you feel more comfortable letting it cool a little bit, giving it a couple minutes to cool, um, you can do that. Um, but I'm been, I've been doing this a while now, so I'm just going to kind of keep it moving. Um, but you definitely can let that sit for a moment. If you have something else to do, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove my jars. I'm going to take them all out at one time so that I can drop my lids and bands in and let them get um, a little uh, sanitized. Um, you can also, if you prefer, you can take them out one at a time. And you could have this sitting to the side in some, you know, hot water, not boiling water. We're not going to boil these. We're just going to put a little bit of hot water over them to just kind of get them a little sanitized. And it also helps with getting the rubber lining around here a little tacky, um, a little, you know, it kind of gets the rubber or the silicone um, ready for sealing. Okay, so that's another reason uh, why we do that. But in this case... I'm going to take all the jars out at once because everything is hot and ready to go. So I don't have any reason to try to keep these jars just sitting in there. So I'm going to just and be careful so that you don't splash. Make sure that you're using the jar lifter. Don't try to use your tongs. Do not use these because they will slip and your jar will fall and splash and burn you and possibly break as well. So a lot can go wrong with that. You definitely want to be using the actual jar lifter. And make sure you're holding your jar lifter the right way. The roly, roly, roly end goes on your hand. <laughs> it 
Don't use this part um, on the jar. Yeah. Almost there. going to remove my rat and just kind of put it out of the way so that I can make just go ahead and dump my lids and bands in here okay I'm just gonna kind of move them around a little bit so that they're all not on top of one another all right that's that I'm gonna put the lid back on only just to control the steam it gets really humid in your house with all this steam. So that's really the only reason that I'm putting the lid back on. Um, I've turned um, the carrots off. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. We are moving really moving along here. Good timing. All right. I'm going to give this a stir. And I'm bringing in a little bit. See how much you can see. Um, but we got those seasonings in there. That thyme and rosemary. So we'll see how this goes. So we're gonna go ahead and get to jarring. So I've got my funnel. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my funnel in one of my jars. And I'm gonna start scooping in my carrots. Now I'm going to use a slotted spoon because I don't want the juice just yet. I'm gonna get the carrots in first, then I will add the juices after, okay? This just helps to ensure that you get a nice balanced amount of carrots get as many carrots as you can in your jars okay when you do it with the juice you know the carrots start floating around in there and you're not going to have as many carrots as that you could have gotten in there so it's always best to use a slotted spoon in these type of recipes get as many as you can in here and let me double check on the headspace for this let's see here with the headspace i'm going by the recipe on page 276 in the all new ball book of canning and preserving okay um, so that's what i'm going by and so the headspace oh, let's see what the headspace is for this okay so it's one inch headspace so step number three lets us know that we're going to be using one inch of headspace. Now, if you've been doing this a while, you can eyeball it. Um, otherwise, you're definitely going to want to use your headspace ruler. And this typically comes with your canning utensil set. Um, I do sell the canning utensil sets on my website at canningwithcolette.com. Or you can find them probably on any um, canning site. So I'm just going to measure and see what we got there. I'm not going to completely go by what I have now because I've got to add my liquid too. But this looks like I'm at about an inch headspace there. I'm going to keep it moving. There's always um, time for adjustment. And there's usually always a need for some type of adjustment. Sometimes we have to add more. Sometimes we have to add, um, take out some. And that's all part of the process. carrots left over but guess what I can use that for my dinner I can use that for tonight's dinner so it's a win-win okay all right so just by me eyeballing these um actually I'm gonna grab some gloves got my kitchen gloves I'm gonna I'm gonna take out a few of these carrots but I don't want to use my bare hands to do that and I don't want to use a spoon it may not work so well so I'm just going to use some gloves to do this part. And I'm going to take a few out of this one because it looks like I have too many. And a few out of this one. 
Actually, I won't put those back in there. I think I have too many over here. But we're gonna find out for sure in a second. See, this one looks too low. There's a little few extra over here. All right, so now here we're gonna, here's the time where we're gonna start adding the juice, okay? So I'm gonna kind of give it a stir so I can make sure my seasons are all evenly dis distributed, <laughs> okay? And now I'll start scooping out some of this broth, okay? And pouring that into the jars. I'm not sure how well you can see. I'm gonna move this over and bring my camera in a little bit more. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how well you were able to see that. Hopefully that's better. All right, I'll move this over. I know that's I'll bring this over here. So I have to keep reaching in front of the camera. Okay, that might be better. There we go. I have the stove on it, but I guess we'll get to that later. We'll do it that later. All right, so broth time. Now, same thing. We're only going to be filling up to an inch. We're going to leave an inch of head space. Okay, as we're filling this up. Yeah, sometimes, like I said, if you've been doing this a while, you may be able to eyeball it and tell how much, you know, where, where to land. But I do it both ways. I eyeball it and then I measure it with the ruler, just to be safe. 